Hello everyone, I'm Anthropomantic Fiends and I do horror related things on the internet. So I wanted to do another Rotten Recommendations video because it is February, which is among many other important things, Women in Horror Month. Aside from Queenie Todd's Dark Mothers in Horror tag video that I did last year, I haven't properly done anything for Women in Horror Month before, which is not okay. The month is pretty much almost over, but I just wanted to recommend some great things created by great female horror creators before the month of February is over. So without further ado, I'm going to give you a few movies to check out, some books, and some YouTube channels. When it comes to all of these movies, I tried to focus on films that are directed by women because obviously people of all genders have all kinds of roles in all kinds of different films, so I could have easily spotlighted things that are written by women or starring amazing actresses or featuring amazing female effects artists, but that could get really crazy, so I tried to focus on directors. First of all, we have The Moth Diaries, directed by Mary Heron. I think I talk about this movie a lot and think about it more than a person should think about a movie sometimes. Mary Heron, of course, also directed American Psycho, which is obviously a favorite of a lot of people and highly praised but I feel like this film gets overlooked a lot and unfairly so. It follows a girl named Rebecca who goes to a boarding school and she's kind of plagued by memories of her father's suicide at the time. Her relationship with one of her best friends seems to be falling apart because of the influence of a new girl at the school named Ernessa. It's a creepy gothic psychological horror film set in the modern day but still retaining a very old world gothic feel that may or may not be supernatural or may or may not just be in Rebecca's mind. The reason I discovered this film is because of its heavy heavy references to Carmilla and I appreciate the way this film plays off the themes of Carmilla but creates its own thing using some similar tropes. It is a really beautiful film aesthetically. I think all of the actors in this do a fantastic job and the story is really strong. So if you've not seen The Moth Diaries, I really, really recommend checking it out. I am currently giving away a copy of this film in my 400 subscriber contest, which will be having its drawing on the 28th of this month. So maybe you can get this if you enter into that, but regardless, I highly recommend looking into this movie in any way that you can because it is one of my favorite horror movies at the moment. Next up we have the film Blood of the Tribids, which is directed by Sofia Cassiola as well as Michael J. Epstein. Blood of the Tribids feels very much like an homage to the exploitation vampire films of the 1970s. A lot of the Hammer stuff, like the Karnstein trilogy, or the Blood Spattered Bride, or some of the stuff by Jess Franco that I don't really care for, but it has a very modern sensibility at the same time, and it takes place in a little Romanian village called Bathory, where the people worship a god called Bathor. Nobody really knows what Bathor is about, but there are kind of these religious heads of the town trying to tell any everyone what Bathor is about. It is kind of a vampire film, but in a weird way because it seems like most of the people within the village of Bathory are vampires in some capacity because in this religion you are only supposed to drink the blood of Bathor and do these certain things, and it is kind of turned into a battle of the sexes because the religious leaders have kind of ostracized all of the women and are hunting them. It's a really hard story to explain in a lot of ways, but the charm of this film is the low-budget gothic aesthetic as well as the kind of dark, very gruesome exploitation vibes this movie has, but with a really, really good dose of camp involved. There's a lot of vulgar gore in this film, but it is done in a way that feels artificial, in a way that's really fun, and the performances in this 
range from really subtle to really over the top and manic and there's clearly a spirit of fun that was involved in the making of this film while still having a very dark and violent gothic feel. I don't know if I've sold you on the movie, but just trust me, you really, really should check this one out. I do not know if it's for everyone, but I think it's an absolute blast, and the soundtrack for the film by the band Night Kisses is beautiful as well. If you want to check this one out, I think it is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. My last film recommendation is going to be Hurt, which I have in this big box of horror collection. I've done a review on it but it is directed by Barbara Stepanski, and it follows a family who moved to a house in more or less the middle of nowhere to try to recover from something of a traumatic past and take in a young girl as a foster child who also seems to have something of a traumatic past. That is really all I can say about this film without spoiling it a bunch because there are a lot of layers to each character's past that kind of gradually get revealed and no one's quite who you think they are and a lot of people are playing with each other's minds. All of this is really vague, but just trust me, it's a really low-budget horror thriller, but a really brutal but still elegantly done thriller, and I have it as a part of this collection. I do not know where it is currently streaming. I think it is at least available to rent on Amazon Prime, but I really do recommend looking into Hurt. Vukovic's Horror Miscellany. I've talked about this once before at the beginning of my channel when talking about informational horror books. And this one is written by Javenka Vukovic, who is really prolific and really important in the horror world, if I can just read off a little bit of what she's done from her bio in the back of this book. Javenka Vukovic is an award-winning filmmaker and author. She has worked as a digital effects artist, earning a Gemini Award, and became an authority on genre film and literature during her tenure as editor of Rumorg magazine. Twice named one of the most important women in the history of horror, Vukovic released her first award-winning horror film, The Captured Bird, in 2012, and is currently touring her third short, The Guest, at festivals around the globe. She is the author of Zombies, an Illustrated History of the Undead, and this book came out in 2015, so that's just what was going on in 2015. She's done a lot of great things since then. If you want to hear more about that, there's a great interview with her done during quarantine by Lisa Latisseur that I will try to link. This book is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little pocket-sized horror book that is full of miscellaneous info on horror media of all kinds. There's things on everything from iconic horror films to early gothic literature to horror games to bands like Black Sabbath and the Misfits and everything in between. So if you want something that'll give you a really, really wide sense of the palette of what horror can be, I recommend picking up this book and flipping through it. Next we have a book that I don't think I shut up about, which is Boring Girls by Sarah Taylor. And Sarah Taylor is probably better known as Chibi, the lead singer of The Birthday Massacre, who are one of my favorite bands. I'm not going to get too in-depth with that or with this book here because I've dedicated a whole video to it earlier in my Rotten Recommendations series, but this is one of my favorite horror books, if not my favorite book. It just profoundly upset and disturbed me. I was very, very on board with the main character and then about halfway through the book something horrible happens and it sends you on this downward spiral and this is not a feel-good book in the slightest. It kind of depresses me every time I read it, but it is so well written that I keep coming back to it. It is a very brutal, realistic, extreme horror story, more extreme than I'm usually comfortable with, but it also is something of a teen coming of age story at the same time and it is centered around the heavy metal scene and looking at both the kind of camaraderie and refuge that someone can find in the metal scene, but also the misogyny that is inherent in a lot of parts of the metal scene. And the last book I'm going to recommend is this ginormous thing. This is A Thousand Women in Horror by Alexandra Heller Nicholas. 
This book just came out last year. It is what it sounds like. It is a A to Z compendium of a thousand different women who have worked in horror film in some capacity. If you are looking for interesting and important things to look into that are created by female creators in the horror genre, this is at this point kind of the be all end all for me it doesn't include everything and alexandra actually makes a point in the forward of saying that there would literally be no way to include everything and the fact that people would be upset that not everything is in there would actually make her happy because it means that people are thinking about how much horror media out there is created by, by women and how much it needs to be included this includes everything from really brief bios on different people who have worked in horror film everyone from screenwriters to actresses to directors to effects artists to someone who just produced one horror film once in her entire career and women from all kinds of countries and orientations and backgrounds etc etc it's again not all encompassing because that's impossible but it includes a lot of things and it's as close as you can get to the be all end all you've got these great little short bios but also these really really cool interviews with a lot of female horror creators that alexandra has conducted including interviews with anna biller who directed the love witch the Soska sisters elvira those are just some of the bigger names there are a lot of smaller names in here as well tanja atomic who directed Manos Returns, the sequel to Manos the Hands of Fate, has an interview in here. Probably the interview I'm most excited about reading is the one with Jordan Hall, the creator of the Carmilla web series, which is my personal favorite adaptation of Le Fanu's novel because it takes this eerie, atmospheric, beautiful gothic vampire story that at its core is probably homophobic and creates this modern, funny, beautiful, macabre romance adventure out of it that is predominantly filmed from one camera angle. I'm going off on a Carmilla tangent right now, but if you've not watched the Carmilla web series, it's one of my favorite things ever, and you probably should. If you are just looking for a really good overview of the amazing variety of women that have worked in horror film, this book is the way to go and it is very up to date again it just came out last year so in the foreword there are references to movies like bit which was my favorite horror movie of last year and the craft legacy which was my 10th favorite movie of last year and there's even an entry in the back of this book for the movie saint maud which just came out but it was already in the works at the time and either was supposed to be released in 2020 or was already on the radar so it's very comprehensive and very up to date at this point i am currently wearing my girly gore hat which i love girly gore being the amazing felicia lobo her channel does a lot of fantastic horror movie reviews on the regular she also does her horror movie club every tuesday which i try to tune into regularly covering kind of a different style of horror or looking at the career of a different actor or director every month she is also part of the sinister sisters podcast with her friend lauren who started as a horror film podcast and are currently looking more at real life paranormal paranormal stuff which is really cool as well she is also the lead singer of the band qualm who are a punk band not 100 horror per se but definitely have some horror adjacent stuff i'm also currently wearing my freaky girls live shirt and for those who don't know they do a regular live stream talking about a couple different horror films more or less at the start of every month I try to tune into the show regularly and their discussions are some of both the most insightful I've had on horror and some of the most off the wall funny conversations I've had with horror just being in the chat there. I'm not going to link every single person who is a part of Freaky Girls Live but they have an amazing lineup of female and non-binary horror YouTubers. I'm going to link Freaky Girls Live and from there you can hunt down all of them individually because all of them have their own 
great channels. One of those channels that I am going to highlight is Gory B Movie, and Gory was part of Horror Addicts with her husband Danny Nightmare for a while, but she is now branched off into doing her own channel, which I absolutely love, and she is on this list both because her in-depth All the Gory Details reviews are some of my favorite reviews of horror films on the internet right now, probably. I love her Happy Birthday to Me review, and she just uploaded a review of Eyes Without a Face a few days ago that I really need to check out and everyone else probably needs to check out too. She's just one of the most well-spoken horror YouTubers that I know of out there, and she is part of the reason that I started my channel, because I first decided to do this channel because of the creepy channel crawl, which I discovered through the horror show, which led me to Horror Addicts and gory, which led me to the creepy channel crawl, and seeing all of the amazing YouTubers that were part of the crawl made me think, what the hell am I doing? I need to be doing this, and here I am. Please follow Gory. Her channel is amazing, and her reviews are some of my favorites. Next up, we have Jen's Reviews from the Grave, which also features Christian, but both Jen and Christian do a lot of fantastic horror reviews, and are two of the kindest most honest and funniest people on YouTube that I know of. Their videos have been known to crack me up because both Jin and Christian have really, really intense personalities that play off of each other really well. Jen and Christian are also both part of the Horror Hangouts, which I believe currently consists of them, Sean Urshan, the Horror Miser Mani G, and the Trash Picture Show, so be sure to check out those live streams as well. They kind of jump from channel to channel, but they're always fun. Next up we have Emily on Elm Street. She is another channel that I discovered through the channel crawl pretty early on. She likes to focus on a lot of old school slashers from what I can tell, as well as a lot of creature features in the vein of Piranha and Creature from the Black Lagoon, and a lot of the more water-dwelling animal horror films seem to be her favorite, just based on some of the reviews I've seen. Her style is very laid-back, very friendly, and I've discovered just how much cult horror from the 70s and 80s I still haven't seen because of her videos. Next up we have 13 Originals. Ethel is just a really chill person. She is not purely a horror YouTuber, but she interacts with the horror community quite a bit. She tends to be a regular on the Trash Picture Show's live streams. She has streamed on my channel before, I've streamed on her channel before, and one of my favorite things that she's currently doing is Trash Picture Theater, which is taking some of the live stream watch alongs that she's done and editing them into a format that looks like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode, which is really cool. She has some of the craziest editing skills that I know of, and putting together something that long with as much editing as she puts into it is a true feat. So please check out all of the stuff she does on her channel. And finally, we have a YouTuber who I have recommended a bunch recently because she still barely has any subscribers, which is not okay, and that is Chiller Thriller. Riley is another one of the most well-spoken horror YouTubers that I know of, and she does a series called Horror for Scared People, which looks very in-depth at a lot of different kinds of horror films and goes into the dark aspects of them but also warns people who are not as comfortable with horror about, you know, everything from jump scares to really just dark themes that come up in the film and, you know, gore. Outside of that, she also did a great series of horror reviews for Christmas throughout December. She did a horror advent calendar doing a different horror or winter adjacent horror film every day, and all of those shorter form reviews were really good. And she also writes on the Nightmare on Film Street podcast website. She does a series called Will Mom Like This, where she subjects her mom to different horror films, most of which her mom probably isn't going to like, and talks about the reaction that both of them had afterwards. And 
I haven't read a lot of those. I need to read more of them, but what I've read of them is really, really good. I will have links for all of this stuff either below or in the cards, so you can support all of these awesome humans. Thank you for watching my video, and hopefully I will see you in another one. Bye!